From its beautiful endless beaches to bustling businesses, Miami-Dade County is one of the largest counties in Florida and one of the most diverse in the United States. With its tropical climate, Miami-Dade County attracts many visitors who enjoy the outdoors, its exciting culture, and great nightlife. Residents who get to enjoy Miami-Dade's warm climate year-round have the added responsibility of being prepared for the many natural and man-made hazards that threaten South Florida. Hello, my name is Vivian Gonzalez. And I'm Phil Farrell. As a native of Miami and local meteorologist, I know South Florida can be faced with many hazards. From wildfires to hurricanes, Miami-Dade County must be ready for any possible natural or man-made disaster. To help you be prepared for any possible emergency, the Miami-Dade County Office of Emergency Management has created the following video. As a resident, I strongly urge you to follow the steps laid out in this video and be prepared. It may save your life. Preparedness is the best protection against the dangers of natural and man-made disasters. But how do we prepare? The answer is simple, by following these four easy steps. Be informed. Make a plan. Get a kit. And get involved. One of the major parts of being informed is understanding the potential threats you and your family may encounter. Miami-Dade County can face many different hazards and its residents need to be prepared for them. They include hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, wildfires, hazardous material releases, and terrorism. Knowing what to do before, during, and after a disaster will reduce stress, fear, and possibly save your life. That is why the first step of being prepared is to be informed. Several resources are available to help inform of emergency preparedness, and they include the local news media, Miami-Dade County's 311 information line, printed brochures, social media, and an internet webpage managed by Miami-Dade County Emergency Management. For those with mobile phones, emergency notification of immediate significant hazards can be received. For information on how to register your mobile phone for free to the county's program, Miami-Dade Alerts, visit www.miamidade.gov forward slash alerts. The most frequent hazard facing Miami-Dade residents is the threat of hurricanes. With winds able to reach upwards of 150 miles per hour, hurricanes can cause extensive damage, flooding and loss of life. Hurricanes are powerful storms that are created when moisture evaporates from a large, warm body of water and enormous amounts of heated air twists high up into the atmosphere. Hurricanes can measure hundreds of miles across and can create widespread destruction. Forming primarily in the Atlantic Ocean and Caribbean Sea, hurricanes rotate in a counterclockwise direction. The center of the storm, or eye, is the calmest part of the storm. But don't be fooled with the calm of the eye. The strongest and most dangerous winds and rain immediately surround the eye of the storm, so it is important to stay sheltered during the entire storm. Since the force of wind increases dramatically with each slight increase in wind speed, the National Hurricane Center created a scale to better convey the dangers of an impending hurricane. As you can see, with each increase on the scale, the damage of the storm will increase by four times. Storm surge is historically the most dangerous part of a hurricane. No part of a storm has caused more damage or loss of life. These hurricanes have such powerful winds that while they move across the ocean, waves as large as 20 feet gather in front of them. Sometimes, spreading across hundreds of miles of coastline, the force of these waves increase as they approach the shoreline, and when they hit, they can easily cause devastation several miles inland. Considering that only six inches to a foot of water can sweep a car off the road, residents should take action in case of storm surge. That's why it's so important to know if you live in an area or zone that needs to evacuate. In order to remain informed once hurricane season begins, be sure to monitor any storm that may appear. Important information such as storm updates and evacuation orders will come via television, radio, social media, and emergency warning systems. As storms get closer to landfall, you may hear terms like hurricane watch and hurricane warning. What's the difference? A watch literally means be on guard. During a watch, monitor specific weather and be prepared to take action. A watch usually occurs 48 hours before the severe conditions of the storm are expected to hit. Discuss your emergency plan with your family and make sure any outdoor items are properly stored or secured. 
We don't need to take full preparatory actions, but we need to stay informed of the possible threat. Now, a warning, however, is issued 36 hours before storm landfall and means that full preparation needs to be made. It means that given all the meteorological expertise of people at the National Hurricane Center, experts believe the weather hazard is imminent and dangerous. It is important to take action. Grab the emergency kit you have prepared in advance and head to safety immediately. Both watches and warnings are important and being aware and prepared can save your life. During most hurricane seasons, more people die or get injured after the storm than they do during the actual storm period. Among the causes of injury are electrocution, fire, carbon monoxide poisoning, motor vehicle accidents, and injuries related to debris removal. To help prevent injury, keep in mind the following safety guidelines. Obey all curfew and emergency orders. Use caution when driving through damaged intersections. Remember to treat intersections with down traffic signals as a four-way stop. Avoid floodwaters. Water may be contaminated by oil, gasoline, or raw sewage. In addition, do not drive through flooded roads. Keep in mind that as little as six inches of water can cause you to lose control of your car. Stay away from downed power lines to avoid the risk of electric shock or electrocution. Use caution when assessing damage to your home or business. Watch out for gas leaks, unstable structures, stray animals, and other hazards. When using a generator, remember that they emit carbon monoxide. They should never be used indoors or near open windows. Follow guidelines in the instruction manual and remember to turn off the generator and let it cool completely before refueling. In addition, help ensure your family's safety from accidental poisoning by installing a carbon monoxide detector in your home. While hurricanes are the hazard that South Florida residents are most likely to face between June 1st and November 30th, it is important to learn about the other types of hazards that could occur in your area. To learn more about other threats facing Miami-Dade County, please visit www.miamidade.gov forward slash OEM. Before a disaster strikes, it's important for Miami-Dade residents to plan in advance what they'll do in case of an emergency. Being able to quickly act on a plan rather than preparing in the spur of the moment can help you and your family mitigate the impacts of a disaster. That's why the second step of being prepared is to make a plan. Since you and your family may not be together when an emergency occurs, it's important to create a family emergency plan that the whole family is comfortable with. This plan will help guide you on what to do before, during, and after a disaster. One main goal of your family emergency plan is to establish a plan for communication. Consider designating a specific family relative that your family members should try to contact during an emergency. A long distance contact is best as local phone lines may be damaged. If you need assistance with your emergency preparedness, consider getting help from a family member, close friend, or caregiver. As part of your planning, make sure to have printed information of your particular needs readily available during emergencies. Each person should fill out an emergency contact card that includes your contact's number, number of local authorities, and an address of a pre-established meeting place. Cards should be kept laminated in a wallet, purse, or backpack. In the event of an approaching hurricane, it is important to take the following actions. Monitor the news for storm advisories and local emergency information. Secure windows and glass doors with shutters. Bring in outside objects that can blow away, such as patio furniture, trash cans, and potted plants. If you own a car, fill your car with gasoline. If you own a boat, make sure your boat is properly secured. If you own a pool, shut off the power to the pump and add extra chlorine to the water. Do not empty the pool completely. You should plan to complete your hurricane preparations as early as 72 hours before the estimated landfall of the hurricane. Listen to the radio or television for news and follow instructions of local emergency officials. Before the beginning of the hurricane season, it's important to have your family emergency plan ready, which should include the completion of tree pruning around your home. One of the most important decisions you may have to make as a threat, such as hurricane or wildfire approaches, is whether you should evacuate or shelter in place. You should understand and plan for both situations. If the decision is made to evacuate, your family emergency plan should include evacuation locations and what supplies to bring. Identify more than one evacuation route as roads may be blocked and anticipate the possibility of taking other means of transportation out of your area. 
Since we live in a highly populated area, it may be easier to evacuate sooner than later, especially for families with small children or persons with functional needs. If you or a loved one has functional, medical, or specialized transportation needs, you may need to take additional steps when preparing your emergency plan. Persons with functional needs or anyone else who may need evacuation assistance should register with Emergency and Evacuation Assistance Program, or EEAP, in order to notify the county that you may need assistance with evacuating during an emergency or disaster. When an evacuation order is given, evacuation centers will be open where no one will be turned away and essential needs will be provided. While evacuation centers are an option to seek as shelter from a hurricane or other hazards, remember, they are a place of last resort. Evacuation centers are designed for protection and not comfort. You can visit www.miamiday.gov forward slash OEM or call Miami-Dade Answer Center at 311 to obtain important evacuation information, such as storm surge zones, evacuation center locations, the EEAP program, and emergency evacuation bus pickup sites. Lastly, don't forget to have a plan for your pets. Miami-Dade County also has pet-friendly evacuation centers available. There are circumstances when staying where you are during an emergency is the best decision. This process is called sheltering in place. If local authorities say conditions are too dangerous outside, you and your family should take immediate action to protect yourself and head to the predetermined safest room inside your home. The safest room to be in during a storm is an interior room with no windows, such as a bathroom or closet. Remember to bring an emergency supply kit with you and stay inside your safe room throughout the entire storm period. No family emergency plan would be complete without an emergency supply kit. When a disaster strikes, local responders may not immediately be available and may be blocked by debris or responding to locations that were more severely impacted. This in turn may lead to emergency responders not being able to provide help right away. This vital part of your emergency plan is the third step to disaster preparedness, and that is why you should get a kit. An emergency supply kit is a collection of basic items that should prepare you and your family to be self-sufficient for at least three days. Keep in mind, hazards in your area may keep first responders from reaching you quickly, and you may need to rely on your resources for longer. While there are many things that might make you more comfortable, think first about necessities. Here is a checklist of those necessities that should be included in your emergency supply kit. Water, one gallon per person per day for drinking and sanitation. At least a three-day supply of non-perishable food items such as canned goods, granola bars, peanut butter, and other items that do not require refrigeration. Try to include foods high in protein and fiber to keep you energized and full be sure to include a can opener. A battery-powered or hand-cranked radio with extra batteries to stay informed of disaster updates. A first aid kit. Make sure to include over-the-counter medications, such as aspirin, as well as prescription medications, such as insulin, heart medicines, or inhalers if necessary. Flashlight with extra batteries. Tools, such as a wrench and pliers to turn off utilities that may cause hazards. Include items such as toilet paper, antibacterial cleaners, moist towelettes, garbage bags, and plastic ties for personal sanitation and hygiene. Place cash, photocopies of credit cards, identification cards, insurance documents, and other important family paperwork in a Ziploc bag or other waterproof container. Items for infants, such as formula, bottles, and diapers, as well as items for pets, including additional water and food, books, games, puzzles, or other activities for children. Other items, such as local maps, a whistle, matches, prescription medications, and a fire extinguisher may be helpful to your survival. When putting together your supply kit, try to keep all your items together in an easy-to-carry plastic container. Make sure to keep your supply kit in a designated place. Make sure all family members know where the kit is kept. If you need to evacuate your home, remember to take your emergency supply kit with you. By having all your necessities already packed, it will save you time leaving your home. It is important to regularly review and maintain your plan and emergency supply every six months. Practice fire and emergency evacuation drills with your family. Review emergency information, including contact numbers and how to dial 911 with all of your family members, especially children. Replace batteries and smoke detectors. 
test and recharge your fire extinguishers according to the manufacturer's instructions. Replace stored food and water and replenish elements in emergency supply kits as necessary. Remember, each type of disaster may require additional supplies. For more information on emergency supply kits, visit ReadySouthFlorida.org. Coordinating with your neighbors and other members of your community on how your neighborhood is going to respond to possible threats can be valuable when a disaster hits. That is why the final step of emergency preparedness is to get involved. You can become a safety and emergency preparedness advocate in your community or become a volunteer member of your local Citizens Corp, local chapter of the American Red Cross, or another local community organization. Whether it's a major hurricane or just a bad fall, the true first responders during an emergency are generally our family and neighbors. Consider informing your neighbors of your emergency plan and preparedness and encourage them to make their own plan and coordinate with you. Visit www.miamidade.gov forward slash OEM for more information on free disaster training, such as the CERT Community Emergency Response Team Program. Whether it's your neighborhood, school, or place of business, your simple actions to prepare yourself and your family will make our community a stronger and safer place.